Okay, here we are with the best overall dirt bike ever right now. Okay, so that's a big statement, right? Best overall dirt bike. But when we're talking about dirt bike, we're referring to motocross and off-road, trails, the track, any of those types of things. And we feel that this 350 XCF is that bike. And here's why. This bike is the Goldilocks of bikes with the 350cc engine and the new generation 2324 bike has been updated. The engine is more powerful, really great feeling. Now, is the bike perfect? No. It comes with air forks in 23. In 24, it has spring forks. The 23 version comes with air forks. So we have switched this bike over to the KYB kit that Racetech has gone through and set up for us, for our buddy Donnie. This is Donnie's bike. My, my video guy and good friend. And what we've done is he set this up for racing off-road as well as riding at tracks like, like here at Kauia, at Glen Helen. Those types of off-road motocross tracks, it's gonna be perfect for. And how do I say all this with, without even have ridden the bike yet? Because I have the same bike at home, but mine's red. So I think it looks a little better or a lot better. Now this 350 XCF has a six-speed transmission, which is really nice. The stock gearing's a little bit off. We went up two teeth on the rear to a 49. That really helps it. So for the engine on these things, it is really good stock. But to make it run just perfect, an ECU from Jamie at Twisted is really what you need. We have the FMF exhaust, the recluse torque drive. That's about it. These things, that's it. These things run so good. And we're up two teeth on the rear with that 49, uh, the Pro-X sprocket, chain of sprocket, and it works so good. So that with the suspension mods, and this bike is incredible. And you go, well, yeah, you got to put a bunch of money into it to make it incredible. But unfortunately, right now, there's no other choices to get a 350 bike like this. We would love to see a YZ350 FX, right? If that bike existed, this might not be our choice. We don't know. So we don't have that choice right now. So for us, this is just an incredible bike, and we have a good build here. I'm going to walk you around a few more of the parts on this thing. So with our wheels, we have the Faster USA made us up some wheels. We have 18-inch rear wheels. Those 18-inch rear wheels are great on the track as well. We have our MX-14 rear tire on here that just scoops and works really good off-road and any of the good tracks around Southern California here, like at Cuya and Glen Helen. We have that MX-33 up front. We have our Works Connection Hole Shot devices. Donnie's going to be doing some races in this thing. That's going to help on those starts. Trail Tech has a fan. And this bike does not have a bunch of stator power. So we set that fan like at 185, it's kind of high, but we don't want to drain the battery. And th that'll really help in those tight trails. Uh, you, it won't kick on a ton in the more wide open desert stuff, just in the tight trails that it, it'll kick on. We have scar foot pegs, which give us a really good footprint, titanium pegs. We have the OEM hand shields. Those are really nice. They bolt up really nicely and look really good. And if you don't want to run at wraparounds, this is a great option for these bikes. We have a few more of the custom works connection bits uh, to go as well that are a little bit blingy bits with our new EMIG 2.0 lock-on grips from ODI that are really nice. And then we have the IMS large tank. IMS does a really good job of keeping the tank slim and fitting as much as they can in this. The fuel pump on these bikes is a little bit uh, improved over past pumps, but its location is tough to get all the fuel. So you'll want to run a big tank if you're going to try to do any amount of off-road riding on these bikes. To go along those ODI grips, we have the ODI uh, podium flight bars. Uh, really nice feel, good flex. Now for the looks in this bike, you can see it's come out really amazing. Got a little bit of tense to the new generation KTM look with the pur purple in there. Decal Works really did a nice job of getting all that for us. Moto Seat did a custom seat cover with some strengthening on the sides. Moto Seat does a great job of matching up the seat cover and we really like this look. The big thing we did to this thing is we had it down to the frame. The frame was black and Donnie loves orange and he wanted this thing to be orange. And so we, had, we got it down to the frame and got it over to San Diego powder coating and got it powder, powder coated, got the rear spring to even match at the same time. So for our rear discard, we went with the really simple ones that do bend kind of easy, but they're real easy to bend back on the rear here, just off of Amazon. It was really inexpensive. Got that on here and then Bulletproof makes a lower shock knuckle guard here, which really helps. We have been at those in the past, so that's nice to have on there, as well as a swing arm guard on the other side. P3 skid plate, and this thing's, you know, looking amazing. Got plenty of protection for what we need. The FMF, we still have the screen in. Uh, for many of the races, will be uh, that you have to be compliant there with a spark arrestor in. We have the oversized front rotor from Tusk. We really like these in all of our bikes. Just gives a little bit more added stopping power. Doesn't hurt it at all. We've gotten so used to how good these KTM model brakes are, it's nice to even have more. 
While our bike was down, we're getting the frame and suspension done, we sent our radiators off to North Carolina to ICW, and he strengthens them up, and he also made it so we could still get our fan on there. We also have the IMS catch can in the frame. This allows us any overflow from the radiators. It's gonna go into that catch can and get back into the radiators later so we don't have any problems overheating. With Recluse, they also make slave cylinders. A lot of people don't realize that. We have the torque drive clutch in there. We don't have an auto clutch, but they make a slave that's an OEM replacement, but it's billet, uh, supposed to be a lot stronger and dissipate heat a lot better, work under those tough conditions. If you're looking for anything dirt bike related, parts, gear, anything like that, head over to our website or the link in the description below and click on the Rocky Mountain link. From there, you'll be able to see all of our top picks and much more. It's a great place to find all the dirt bike parts that you need. Okay, so that's a good look at this bike that uh, we put some pretty high standards on, saying it's the best dirt bike ever because it's great at the track, as we see here, and the trail, and it's just a blast. I uh, really love this thing. It's just like mine, so that's another reason I like it, other than the color. So, uh, in case you thought I got skinnier and faster, uh, the, the fast guy, skinny guy photos, that's Luke Santos with uh, Factory MX Vacations out here in Southern California. We had him come in and do some photo model shots for us, and, uh, and he really enjoyed the bike as well. He rides a lot of uh, KTM model bikes. 250, 450, 350, he rides all of them, and he really liked the bike as well. So it's, it's just a great all-around bike for so many guys. On the track, uh, him and I both feel like it is a bit softer than the SXF model, but for most guys, that's actually a good thing. And going up two teeth in the rear kind of evens that out a bit, but for most tracks, most people will never notice that this is a tiny bit less, and it's mainly going to be the tranny that's, that's causing some of that uh, feeling of being a little bit less than that five-speed closer ratio on the SXF model. So on the track, I don't know that anybody's going to, unless you're really serious about chasing more motocross, then you'd want to look at an SXF and you're not too concerned about trails. But if you're riding trails and track, this XCF model is amazing and I think it's the best all-around bike. On these tight trails that you see us ride in here, I'm in second gear on almost everything and then we can pop into third a lot quicker than you might think, which is really nice with this gearing. Really like that. The feel of this thing, it just chugs and you can keep going. And that's one of the reasons we like it so much more than a two-stroke on the trails. The two-stroke is maybe better in a couple little cases, but overall, we feel so much more comfortable in a four-stroke like this, 350 on the trails. On the track, this bike is fully capable. As you see uh, Luke spinning some laps and uh, giving some, uh, some whips and so forth on some of these jumps and just ripping these turns, the bike is incredible on the track. And that MX-14 hooks up really well and does really well off-road as well. We're in a bit of a dry spell now at the end of summer in California and uh, conditions aren't prime uh, off-road. Uh, we did have uh, some prime conditions a little while back uh, with a freak summer rainstorm and I was able to ride mine out in the desert and these bikes even do better the more open the trails are. Donnie's got a couple races coming up, NPGC races at Ridgecrest and then Havasu. So we're going to try to get some of that footage in here and get Donnie, uh, get some laps in this thing. He's been off of racing for a while, so it's going to be cool to see him back racing in the uh, plus 50-year-old class out in these off-road races. And that's where this bike is going to shine. That's really what it was intended, built for. And uh, it's going to time to go get this thing beat up racing. Uh, hopefully you can enjoy some of that footage, get him racing. And again, it's a big, tall order. One last thing to go over, if you're looking at a 25 model or if when you watch this video later and there's future models, the 24 model has spring fork stocks. That's going to save you a ton of money than converting air forks like we did here. The stock spring forks I think are going to be plenty good. Maybe they're not quite as, when I, when I talk to the suspension guys, these KYB components or the 6500 components have a little bit more you know, features in them, but for the most part, the, the, the stock 24 forks, you're gonna be able to make them work really well uh, and be just fine. So that could save you some money. Uh, there's been deal, guys getting better deals on some of the older bikes, the 23s and older, because of the air fork and the, the new bike coming with uh, spring forks. So and that's one of the reasons we're kinda someday hoping for a YZ350 FX, because that would come with spring forks and we like the Yamaha stock forks so good. So we're, we're crossing our fingers that someday Yamaha will do that. Uh, I don't know if Honda will, but uh, some of these other brands, if they would jump on it, I think this 350 is a good size for a lot of people out there, especially a lot of vet guys. It's a, it's a great size bike uh, and can really do well. As you can see in a lot of our footage from, from, from Donnie Race and Luke Ride and myself on the trails, 
it's a great overall bike. So hopefully you enjoy. Uh, if you like what we're doing, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and hopefully we'll see you out the track or trail soon. If you're considering that, that's something to consider. The ECU, if you don't have the money to do a full Vortex ECU from Jamie at Twisted like we did, he also maps stock ECUs, and that gives you a, a, a lot of the close gains. Not all the features, but you get a pretty good gain for the money. Hey, we're back here with the 350 XCF, and unfortunately, Donnie had a little boo-boo, broke some ribs, uh, motocrossing, not on this bike, on his other bike, so he couldn't get to those two off-road races we were talking about, but he did heal up in time for us to go on a Utah trip, so we have some of that footage worked into this video here. That's what that footage is from. We did a southern kind of central Utah trip in a couple different really cool places, and this bike was awesome. I mean, uh, I was on the older generation 350 XCF, and when I'd hop on this thing, it was like night and day. And Donnie loved it. Suspension worked amazing, motors amazing, and uh, did really good. Did have a couple little boo-boos on the trail. A little fall over, right, Donnie? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay, so we got a little scratch to the pipe. We're going to give you some tips on fixing that right now. With the pipe still on the bike, we like to clean the sticker off on it like this because we do get a little bit more leverage uh, to pull the sticker off. Uh, we use map gas to kind of heat it up a little bit. Um, and then after that, uh, a little contact cleaner to get the rest of the glue off. We use a uh, sandy disc on a pneumatic sander. Uh, it's a 220 grit disc. Uh, and then we follow that up with uh, sandpaper. Either three or 400 grit would work fine. Um, and then you can see here, we had to go back because the scratches were a little bit deeper. So we went back with, uh, with the sanding disc again and then followed it back up with our three or 400 grit sandpaper uh, to finish that off. And then we took it over to Sano Metal Finishing and Puffer over there, vapor honed it. And obviously we're vapor honing the anodize off, the blue anodize, but we kind of like this look, this kind of natural look. And uh, we think that the pipe uh, turned out really nice. Know where you're going with the number one GPS app, accessing 500,000 miles of trails and roads, open dates and public lands. Plan your routes before you head out with the new state-of-the-art route builder. The Elite version even shows landowners and property boundaries. Download the Onyx off-road app today for a free seven-day trial. Also, to save 20%, use the discount code DBTV1.